death that lurks in the shadows, the coldness of space. It waits for its opportunity, it pounce, but only courage and bravery will survive. Oh, what's this? Space Hulk, Death Angel. Oh man, we gotta play this. So here it is, Space Hulk Death Angel, the card game. This game is based on a board game that was released in 1989 called Space Hulk. It's published by Fantasy Flight Games. It plays one to six players, and that's the reason why I picked it up, because it makes a great solo game. Designed by Corey Konitska? Konitska? Konitska. The game is set in the cheery, bubbly world of Warhammer. So in Space Hulk, you command a squad of Space Marines and a Space Hulk. A Space Hulk is basically just a spaceship and it's very narrow and cramped and you're being attacked by these aliens called Gene Stealers from both the left and right. The object of the game is to get at least one Space Marine to beat the final location Thus, you are the winner. Of course, this won't happen very often because this game is extremely hard. So inside the box, you will find a red die numbered zero to five. One, two, and three will have these little skull icons on them. You'll also find these squad tokens and 12 things called support tokens, not to mention a slew of cards. So using my trusty little foam board uh, DIY dice tower, let's play some solo Death Angel. Okie dokie, artichoke. We're ready to start playing our Death Angel. One quick note, I'm not, this isn't scripted, so I might get some things wrong. If I do get anything wrong with the rules, please leave comments uh, below. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take your blip deck and just put it up somewhere where you can reach it. Next, you're going to want to grab your event cards, put it, um, I don't know, somewhere in the same spot there up top. And up next, void lock card. I am doing a single player game, so I will select the void lock card that is a setup for a one player game. So according to the void lock card, it says location deck setup, two, three, four. So what you're supposed to do is randomly just pick one out of each pile. So I'll select this for number two, I'll select this one for number three, and why not, this one for number four. So you got level one, two, three, and four. Now, again, according to going back to the void lock card, on the bottom left and right corners, there uh, there's a number and it says six and six. What that means is you have to take six of your blip cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, put one pile on the left, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one pile on the right. Now I'm going to randomly select my Marine teams. Of course, you can do this by just picking the teams that you want. And we have selected the purple team, the yellow team, and the red team. So now we have to select our Space Marines. Remember, two come per squad. So I need to find two of the purples, which is Brother Amino and Brother Zayal. And next is the red team. Brother Valencio and Brother Leon. And finally with the yellow team, Brother Goriel and Brother Claudio. So after that, same thing, we gotta select the appropriate action cards per team. So here are the three red action cards, three purple action cards, finally three yellow action cards. The way I like to set up the uh, action cards is put them to the side. Well, here's move and activate, here's support, and here is attack. This is all for the yellow team, and I take their icon and put it there. So up next, what you want to do is without looking, shuffle up your Marines, and I'm looking away here, I'm not looking at what I'm doing. So I gave it a good shuffle. So top half to the left, bottom half to the right. So yellow will go first, red is second, and another red, and now these guys, yellow, facing the right, and the bottom two purple guys will be facing the right as well. So on top, I got Brother Claudio with a range zero attack. What does that mean? What, what does range attack mean? For example, Brother Valencio has a range two attack. So we can attack here, here, or here. Zero, one, two, or zero, one, two. So he can attack anything that shows up here. Brother Zale has a range one attack. So zero, one, or zero, one. So he can attack only things down here. 
Now, we're not finished uh, setting up just yet. We do have these symbols on the void lock card that refer to terrain cards. On the terrain card on the top right corner, there's a symbol that matches the symbol that you're seeing up on the card, on the void lock card. On this side, it says place a door in the first position. And then on this side, it says place a dark corner in the third position going down. Now on this side, we're going up. So it says on the second position, place a dark, um, not a dark corridor, but just a corridor rather. And then one, two, three, place a ventilation duct right here. So these are the spawn points where these gene stealers are going to spawn from. On the cards, on the marine cards, you'll notice these red arrows on the bottom left and the top right corners. Think of this whole area beside the marines as a conveyor belt that goes like this, okay? Just keep that in mind. So now I'm gonna grab an event card. So when you first pull an event card, you ignore the uh, event text. We're just gonna concentrate on the symbols below. So if you notice, there are these colored bars. What these colored bars are referring to are your terrain cards. On the top left corner of your terrain card, you'll see a matching colored bar. There's also these triangles. If you look at your void lock card, uh, for a single player game, there's a two in a yellow triangle and a one in a white triangle. The yellow triangle represents a heavy attack and the white represents a light attack. So on this event card, we are going to place a light attack or one gene stealer on the yellow terrain card and one on the orange terrain card. So on the corresponding blip pile where the yellow is, we're gonna spawn one gene stealer. So now we have one gene stealer facing brother Claudio. Up next, it says on orange, spawn one. So we got another gene stealer. The symbol that you see here is that any gene stealer with that symbol will flip from one side to the other. So he hops across the, the corridor that the Marines have entered from. All right, so before we begin, let's just go over a few definitions. This is a gene stealer. This is a swarm of gene stealers. When you have two or more, that is considered a swarm. This is not a swarm. So next is how do attacks work? Well, you attack by rolling the dice. Let's say this Marine here, if he's facing a gene stealer, you roll the dice. If it comes up with a skull, in this case it did, he has slayed one gene stealer. If he has a support token on him, he could perform a second attack. So if there were two gene stealers and he rolled a two, that would take care of one and he could spend an extra support token, reroll the dice to hopefully get another skull to eliminate the next guy. The way gene stealers attack is they also roll the dice. If they roll the dice and they get a number equal to or less than the amount of gene stealers in the attack formation, that Marine is dead. However, if that Marine has a support token on him, he could spend that support token to re-roll the gene stealer attack and hopefully get a favorable outcome. In this case, let's say a five. So with that said, let's continue. First is choose actions phase. So, and the way the action cards work is you just choose an action. You can only choose one action per team. You cannot use them consecutively. Let's just play the game and you'll see how it works. Every action card, they're all the same. So for example, these are all attack, these are all support, and these are all move and activate. So every team can do the same thing. However, the difference is they all have these special abilities which are unique to uh, that team. So for example, for yellow team, the special ability is instead of attacking with Brother Claudio, which is this guy right here, you may slay up to three gene stealers within one range of them, ignoring facing. Then roll the die. If you roll a zero, Brother Claudio is slain. That's the yellow team special ability. We're not gonna use it. We're just gonna do a plain old attack. So up next, um, move and activate. If I chose move and activate for the red team, what I could do is move and activate. So both red team members can swap places adjacent to their um, Marines. So for example, brother Leon here could have swapped places with brother Claudio or brother Valencio, right? And also what you can do is flip sides. You could change the orientation of your Marine. The second thing you can do is you, if you have a card that has the word activate on it, you can activate it. For example, this door. 
This door has an activate panel and it says, place one support token on this card. When traveling to the next level, basically, the current player, which is us, because it's a single player game, uh, may slay up to one gene stealer in the formation for each token on this card. So that means they did. we made it through the door, but they did it. All right. The only time you can travel to level two is when one of these blip piles are done. At the end of that phase, you swap it out and you'll see how that works. So I think what I'm going to do is just select support for red team. The default action of support is you could take one of these. This is like a little gun, an extra gun, and you could give it to any space Marine. And the special ability of support for red is at the end of the event phase, each of your space Marines may spend one support token to make an attack. So after this action phase, um, anyone with a support token can uh, choose an attack. I'm going to select move and activate for the purple team. So with all that said, now we go into the next phase, which is resolve the actions. The way you do that is the lowest card goes first. So in the lowest action card here is number four, which is support. I'm gonna give it to brother Amino. Uh, so move and activate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move brother Amino up. And the reason why I'm moving brother Amino up is because he has an attack range of two, zero, one, two. So if brother Goriel here on the yellow team who's attacking misses, this guy could possibly get him. There's nothing to activate here, so activation is, is pointless. Um, and that special ability is, after resolving this card's action, you may look at the top card of the event deck, then place it at the bottom. So let's take a look at what the next event will be. It's gonna be a light attack. There's no jumping or switching of uh, Gene Stealer's positions. Uh, I'm gonna elect to put that on the bottom. This is pretty much resolved. And finally, attack. So here we go, we're gonna start attacking going down, starting from Brother Claudio. In order for Brother Claudio to successfully defeat this Gene Stealer, he needs to roll a skull. And he does, he gets a one. So this Gene Stealer is dead. We're gonna go down and Brother Goriel here is going to attack this Gene Stealer. And he needs a skull as well. And he gets a skull, he gets a three, very good. Usually that doesn't happen. This guy gets to keep his support token because on that support action card, the ability was he could have made an attack if uh, Brother Goriel missed. Um, we flip that and we're done. Now it's the Gene Stealer's turn to attack, going from left to right using our conveyor belt but there are no gene stealers because we defeated all of them so now we pull an event card temporary sanctuary instinct choose a swarm of gene stealers but the thing is we don't have any gene stealers so that does not help us unfortunately there's a heavy attack coming so on the red card which is ventilation duct we need to spawn two gene stealers and on the orange card two gene stealers from this pile and then finally, uh, the third symbol is this sort of claw mark. And there's an up and down arrow. Again, using the conveyor belt, any gene stealers with that symbol in a swarm, by the way, the uh, gene stealer with that symbol happens to be this guy. He is attached to another gene stealer. So they move up according to the arrows. Huh, what are we going to do now? Now I can't use, yellow cannot attack again because you cannot use action cards from round to round. So who can attack? Well, it looks like I'm gonna have to do a double attack here. Purple team, zero one. So Brother Zale cannot reach these guys. These guys are facing this way. Brother Amino, however, zero one two, can face them. Plus he has a support token to make an additional attack. So he could wipe these guys out. Well, let's just see what happens. Um, Purple team is going to attack. And purple's special ability is when brother Zael, who's on the bottom, unfortunately, attacks, ignore all skull icons rolled. Instead, slay that number of gene stealers in the swarm equal to the number rolled. Well, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and choose our other attack, which is going to be red team. Red team special attack ability is brother Leon may attack up to three times instead of just once. Okay, so we're gonna go with him and yellow is going to move and activate. 
Now the cool thing about yellow's special ability is your space marines may move to any position in the formation instead of just to the adjacent positions. Okay, so we go with the lowest number first on the action card, which is move and activate. So he's gonna move up here and brother Claudio is going to activate the door. Did I do this wrong? Yes, I did. Hold on a second. I'm going to swap brother Zael. There we go, that's what I meant to do. Brother Zael now is going to attack and his special ability is whatever number comes up, that's how many gene stealers will die. Three, so this whole swarm is dead. Nice, and he can save his support token. So that's done. Brother Leon, who is first to attack, he gets to attack up to three times. So let's see if he can't wipe out this swarm. One, misses, gets a four. Second shot, he gets one, which is good. And third shot, another one. So he wipes them out. This is actually really good. This never happens. All right, looks like my microphone is back and working. I lost my, uh, my mic there for a second. Well, we're ready to move on to the next uh, event. Uh, stalking from the shadows. Choose a space marine with at least one support token and discard all of his support tokens. Sorry, Brother Amino. All right, and according to this, on red, there will be a heavy attack of two cards. And on green, there will be an attack of one, which is the corridor. And anything with a skull icon on it moves up and down, and there are no gene stealers with a skull icon on it. So what can we do here? Well, red and purple have attacked and they're directly in front of red and purple, which sucks. But yellow can attack. Uh, we're gonna choose support for red. And at the end of the event phase, each of your space marines may spend one support token. So brother, um, I'm gonna have to make yellow attack. So he's gonna do that. So yellow's going to attack. Choose that for yellow and purple. What's purple going to do? Actually, you know what? We are going to move and activate for purple. And so lowest card support. Uh, we already threw um, the thing on. Next would be move and activate. So I am going to move Brother Valencio down and I am going to f I'm going to do that. So now we have a guy on the top half facing this way at least. And the special ability for move and activate is after resolving this card's action, you may look at the top. No, we're getting rid of that one because that is that requires two heavy attacks. So now it's attack. So yellow is going to attack. I want to thin out this swarm. So I'm gonna I choose to attack this swarm. And that's another thing, you have to name the swarm you're attacking. So he needs a skull icon. He does get one. And let's thin out the herd here. Use our support token. Do another attack. Now, which one do I want to attack here? We're gonna attack this guy. And he gets a four, it's a miss. So now it's the Gene Stealer's turn to attack. Uh, the Gene Stealers will attack using our conveyor belt. So the first guy to attack, is, uh, Brother Amino, is this Gene Stealer. If it comes out a zero or one, Brother Amino is dead. It's a three, so it's a miss. Next is this Gene Stealer attacking Brother Valencio. And it's a one. Oh, Brother Valencio, dead. Poor little guy. So the way this uh, shifting thing works is the smallest pile shifts to the biggest pile. So this will shift up. These two rooms will merge, which sucks. Because they now they have two gene stealers on them and they have two spawn points. And we are down a Marine. Uh, we have one card left in this blip pile. That means we're going to be traveling. So this card says, choose a space marine and roll a die if you roll a skull slay two gene stealers engaged with him of your choice and he is engaged i guess it's brother uh, amino here if we get a skull we get to kill two of them and he misses he gets a zero that sucks so now on orange two will spawn here one two and next going from left to right two will spawn on green which is here we're done. So this is the end of this event phase. So that means we get to travel. And the cool thing is we have one token on the door. So that means we can get rid of one gene stealer, which is going to be this guy. Now, the unfortunate thing is 
Uh, there's a movement icon before we move to level two. So let me just put this here for now. Uh, there is a movement icon and anything with a tongue on it gets to move. And this swarm has a gene stealer with a tongue icon. So he's gonna move up. That event is done. Now we still have to do our actions to attack these guys, but guess what? We're gonna be in a new room. So what does that mean? Well, we get rid of our terrain cards. We spawn a new location. And it says here that going two down, one, two, spawns the corridor. And then one, two, three, four, spawns a door. And on this side, going up, one, two, three, spawns a ventilation duct. And one, two, uh, spawns something called a, pro a Prometheum tank. These gene stealers have made it through the door and this guy's being attacked by both sides, which sucks. Oh, actually, one thing I forgot to do. Five gene stealers, according to this new location, one, two, three, four, five, will spawn on the left, and one, two, three, four, five, six, will spawn on the right. So it says, upon entering this room, the current player chooses a swarm if able and spawns two gene stealers on it. If zero swarms are in the formation, this has no effect. Wow. Okay, I am going to spawn two gene stealers on this swarm. So we are going to choose attack for purple, move and activate for the door, or maybe the, for this Prometheum tank. Now the way the Prometheum tank activation works, if we had gene stealers here, we roll the dice. Well, first off, all the gene stealers die. So it's kind of like the space marine who's activating it blows up this special tank and all gene stealers die. Then you roll the dice. If a, a zero comes down, that marine didn't survive the explosion. But he's going to activate the door. Um, or sorry, Brother Goriel here is going to activate the door. He's going to move up and flip and activate the door. So we got him. And finally, uh, now what should we do with red? Um, all right, I'm going to make him attack as well. Brother Leon, because he gets to attack up to three times. So essentially the plan I have now with the action cards could eliminate all these gene stealers. So let's see what happens. So now we are on the, uh, the action phase is done. Now we resolve our actions. So the lowest card goes first, which is move and activate. So he's going to come up here, activate the door. That's done. Uh, purple attack. So brother Zyle here and his special ability is no matter the number he rolls, the number of gene stealers that get killed. So let's see what happens. He gets a four. Wow. Excellent. Goodbye. Uh, purple. Well, the other purple guy has nothing to do. So that purple is resolved. And now finally brother Leon gets to attack up to three times. So brother Leon, make it good, buddy. Skull. Nope, a miss, zero. But you get two more chances with Brother Leon, and he gets one, which is excellent. Final attack for Brother Leon, and he gets it. Kablamo, and my plan worked out perfectly. Okay, so let me just pause the video right here because this video is getting a little bit too long for my taste. So what I'm gonna do is fast forward just before the final level because at this point, I think he got more than enough of uh, a gist of how the gameplay works. So the only thing that really happened anyway is that I lost more Marines. And this should be about right. All right, back to the video. All right, next event card. Uh, rewarded Faith. Instinct. Choose a Space Marine. You may discard the amount of tokens on him and slay the equal amount of Gene Stealers. Well, Brother Leon, we're going to spend that and get rid of that guy because he's bothering me. So in this phase... We have an empty blip pile. So we're about to go to the final level and two on red, which we don't have enough to put on red. So it's done. And one token on the door, meaning we can get rid of one gene stealer. So I'm gonna knock this down and not make it a swarm. Get rid of our terrain. And here we are on the final level. Toxic pumping station, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The terrain is, is a corridor. Two going up is a control panel. 
ventilation duct on number one. So anyone with a tail gets to move. So these two merge into one swarm. And it says, every time you activate this control panel, roll a die and discard that many cards from the blip pile of your choice. Space Marines may only win if there are zero cards in both blip piles and zero gene stealers in the formation. So let's get to it. This is gonna be a lot of activating of this control panel. Unfortunately, we only have one left. I definitely wanna move and activate. So red will move and activate this control panel. Purple, I guess, is going to, oh, he only has a range one attack. Well, we're gonna to have to do that. Yeah, that's all he can do. All right, anyway, support. So we throw a support to someone and I am going to throw it to Brother Zyle. Uh, move and attack, activate. Well, I can't move and activate because that will push him away from these gene stealers. So that's not good. No, nope. can't do anything with that. And finally, the purple attack. So, Brother Zyle, he attacks based on the number rolled. So he can actually wipe out this if it's two or more. He's going to wipe out, oh, only gets a one. Uh, it looks like the Gene Stealers could potentially really win this game. All right, going using our conveyor belt. This Gene Stealer is going to attack Brother Claudio. Brother Claudio is defenseless. A one or a zero, he is dead. And guess what? It is a one. Brother Claudio, goodbye. Up next is this Gene Stealer will be attacking Brother Leon from behind. And wow. Brother Leon is dead. Well, now everything merges. Two gene stealers, two rooms, and we pull an event card. I can now officially get rid of uh, these guys. They're done, we only got one guy left. We came pretty close to winning this game, but I think we are about to lose it. So let's see what happens. Instinct, choose a space marine, spawn two gene stealers behind him. How awesome is that? And it looks like orange gets one gene stealer added and red gets an added gene stealer and anything with a skull flips. So these two just basically swap positions. Uh, yeah, that's it. He's going to die. This is pretty much game over and he can't even attack, but he is going to move and activate and that's all he can do. So he activates the control panel and now we roll the dice. And a five. So one, two, three, four, five gene stealer get put away. But unfortunately now the swarms are going to attack and I have a feeling this is going to be game over and it is going to be a three. Well, that's it. He died. Game over. We came very close to winning the game, but Brother Zyle is destroyed. Anyway, that's pretty much how you play um, Death Angel. It is a, it's a good game and don't get me wrong, you can beat this game. It's just, it's not gonna be uh, a steady win all the time. So I hope this uh, video helped you. I hope you liked it. And um, I will see you in my next video whenever I decide to make that. Bye.